I'm here at Castles and Coasters located in Phoenix, Arizona. This place is home to two roller coasters, bumper boats, bumper cars, mini golf, and so much more. So why are we here? Well, the thing is this place actually started as an arcade back in the late 70s, and it's gone through a lot of changes since its inception. However, pieces of the past can be seen in some of the retro games that remain. The rumor is there's a graveyard of arcade parts that's been here since this place originally opened. This is Chasing Nostalgia. Come with me on a mission as we revisit the past. Welcome to Castles and Coasters. It's so crazy to me that this place started as an arcade, but look at it now. So as you can see, there's a ton of stuff around here. And what's awesome is one of the park managers gave us free reign for the whole entire day. We're gonna have some fun. everybody, I'm Cole Grantham. I'm one of the park managers here at Castles and Coasters. I'm real glad to have Ralph and Mason out here with us. Kind of show you guys around a little bit about what we have. Uh, we have a four 18 hole mini golf courses, all each unique. So it's a different experience every time you play. Our arcade is humongous. We've got over 150 plus new and retro games, even pinball. Also, we have 15 plus rides and attractions. Uh, hopefully we can get Ralph on something and scare the pants off him. Cool. First off, thanks for having us out for the day. Absolutely, this is awesome. Man. I mean, yeah. this is so great. I can't help but look around here and like everything is so intricate. I uh, know. Yeah, well, I mean, everything's unique to us. It was all built from the ground up. My grandfather and some of his partners, they actually laid all the groundwork, built this from the ground up. It's completely unique to us. So and you can't get this anywhere else. Your grandfather actually poured the concrete for this place, right? Poured like the concrete, original, yeah. dug the trenches, laid the pipe. I mean, yeah. 77 is when we opened up. Oh, so in crazy. that time frame. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, so you brought me to what the 12th hole. I feel like you're messing with me because this looks like a really difficult hole. <laughs> it's a steep, it's a steep <laughs> uphill, but it's a fun one. It's got our big castle. That's not good, I don't think. Oh, oh, oh! Come on, throw some legs. Oh wait, it's crawling. <laughs> wait a minute, wait. Oh, oh. oh. This is dumb luck because I'm never, I'm never this good at mini golf, but, uh, but I feel like I have a little bit of an advantage here. It's kind of weird because when you, when you reach out to me and said. You, know, you want to come out here. I grew up with this amusement park in Rhode Island. It was called Rocky Point. Yeah. And the thing about that place, it had been there for a really long time. And it was one of those places where like my parents went as kids and then they brought us as kids. Yeah. And th since this place has been here since the late seventies, that has to be the case here too, right? Definitely. I mean, it's probably one of the biggest comments that we get when families come to the park is you'll have parents that are native from here and they'll come to the park with their kids and they'll be like, oh, the great thing about this park is this, it's the exact same it was when I was a kid. I played this hole back when I was your age. And yeah. it's it's a great connecting thing for families to get and experience that. You do update things. So it's like this challenge of you kind of keep it you right. keep we it nostalgia, the old, but, but also yeah. want to kind of bring in some new. We do try and keep things up to date, keep things looking fresh. Mainly in the arcade is where we can try and interject some of that. Cool. this place started as an actual arcade, right? Like didn't have all of these attractions it has today, right? Yeah, no, it started off as golf and stuff and it was just the arcade and the mini golf. And then he had the, the race cars and then the bumper boats actually used to be batting cages. Oh, nice. I definitely want to check out the arcade because you said that it's gone through transitions, but you still have retro games there, I saw. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, you kind of cater to both the new and old like we were talking about before, but you also told me there's like some kind of graveyard of just parts. Yeah, the graveyard. So in our tech town, we actually do have a little bit of behind the scenes I'm going to take you into. Okay. Um, kind of shows you some of the transition that we've had and some of the stuff we've had from over the years. Kind nice. of see what, what we've gone through to make it what it is today. But yeah, we'll take a peek of that. So is it possible that there's parts there that date back to There's like, probably the 80s? parts back there that are older than me. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, I'm gonna see if I fare any better on this one. Yeah, on try to keep hole. it under 15 this time. <laughs> Come on, get in there. Oh. Oh. All right, do over. In this game of mini golf, I'd say we both got robbed, but right inside there's a massive arcade. So I have new priorities now. Sorry, Cole, you can take the win on this one. You know, it's hard to believe that just decades ago, an abundance of pinball machines scattered these floors. And today, those same kids that are now adults flood the grounds with their families, enjoying modern takes on the classic games that they grew up on. And to those parents, it probably feels like home. This place is kind of playing with my emotions because I don't really go to newer arcades very often. I go to barcades and they have classic games, but this is Rampage, 
a game I played a ton as a kid, and it's like a new sort of reinvented version of it. And I find that as I walk around here, there's a bunch of those. And of course, I'm gonna play as Ralph. Rampage caught my eye, but we're just scratching the surface when it comes to these cool retro remasters. So Space Invaders Frenzy is another one of those modern takes on, you know, a real old game. It's pretty cool. It's freaking chaotic as hell. And there's something that's so awesome about this is the sound system in this thing is freaking insane. At the Castles and Coasters arcades, you have some retro games upstairs, but then you have like all this awesome modern stuff. And I've been playing Halo Infinite on the Xbox Series X, and I gotta admit, I have to stop and at least check this out before we explore a little bit more. I'm having a ton of fun, but it's gonna be difficult for me to continue exploring on an empty stomach. Lucky for me, hiding away near the roller coasters is a pizzeria operated by the Castles and Coasters crew. I walked into this place and I felt immediately transported to a new world. Pizza, wings, fried ravioli, cannoli! Come on, this place is awesome and worth a feast. But now that I'm stuffed, let's go to the graveyard. All right, Cole, so what is this place? So remember how I told you we do everything in-house? Yeah. So all of the arcade maintenance and repairs happens here in Tech Town. Also attached to Tech Town is that arcade graveyard. You keep telling me about that, yeah. telling you about that. So, <laughs> so graveyard's this way. All right. Wait a minute, Cole. This is awesome. This is a Nintendo Super System. You don't see these very often. This one here, it's it's a pretty popular system. It's got three and one on it. Zelda, it's got uh, Super Mario 3 and F-Zero. Nice. Yeah, these are cool. I, um, I almost bought one of these at auction once, and I, I, I missed out on it. I'll probably want one at some point, but I just love them because of the controllers on the yeah, front. They the have retro the, controller. They look kind of like a Super Nintendo controller. Those are neat. All right, I'm sorry. I got distracted. <laughs> this has been accumulating from the whole time that we've been here. This stuff in here still does work. Yeah. We've collected just about everything that we've either pulled out of a game or ordered for a game and have as backup yeah, I mean, for a game. Oh my gosh, I got to check out some of those boards yeah, back there. Is that cool? Come right, on up. Cool. I know Arkanoid, but I didn't know there was an Arkanoid Returns. Would you care if I took it home just to test it? Because you said some of this stuff is just untested, right? Yeah, man. You can try it out. Really? Yeah. That'd be awesome. You know, I could be digging through these boards all day long. There's even a room full of CRTs just around the corner. Tons of PCBs and wires and parts just lingering. No wonder they call this place the graveyard. That was cool, man. Thanks for showing me that. Oh, that's not all. We got more on the roof. Ralph, you coming? Cole, are you serious? Dude, come on. But why is it on the roof? It's not that bad, Ralph. Oh my gosh, my eyes. We're literally on the roof. This is nuts. <laughs> it's Wait crazy. Till you see it. <laughs> okay. I'm trusting you right now. You're not gonna like lock me up in here or anything weird. No. <laughs> wait, wait. You, you want me to go in that? There's no way. I'm not going in there. Come on. No. I'm not going in. <laughs> Shut up. There's arcade stuff in there. There's arcade stuff in there. I promise. It's creepy in here. Oh my God. Dude, this is awesome. Cole, this is crazy. I see like super sprint boards. There's NBA Showtime. Gold so mine. much stuff in here. I think this is House of the Dead. And this stuff's just been up here? We take it apart, we get new stuff in, and we just get busy, and some of this stuff just kind of gets <laughs> oh accumulated. There's a WWF Superstars. Look. <laughs> That's cool, even though it doesn't have a game to go with it. That's freaking cool. <laughs> and there's like a bunch of PCs in here. You know, what's interesting about this room is that most of the modern arcade games are now PCs anyway, but like you've got a whole wall of boards here. This is a Tempest control panel, and it's actually in pretty good shape. I got steering wheels, Neo Geo control panels. If you want to talk about a retro gamer's hideaway, this is it. I'm surprised at how many parts are in here. I could get lost, and I found a NARC. This is all the parts to a NARC. What the hell? Oh my God. Donkey Kong. Ooh. Yeah, that's worth some money. You'd want to hold on to that. If you want to sell it to me, that's cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I just found a Terminator 2 board. For those of you that aren't familiar with the cabinet, there's like this door on the side that an operator could pop out and then see the handle on the on this PCB tray just pulls out so they could work on it. So that's pretty cool. So you must you guys must have had a T2 at some yeah. point. There is another pillar over there. Have you ever checked that out? I I've honest, I've never I've never looked into this one. Let me check. I really doubt it. Can you imagine? You don't think there'd be anything in here? There's probably twice as much in here. Oh my god, this one's got shelving. I don't know, whenever you guys converted all the coin doors to the card readers, someone just put all the coin doors up here. So it's all the coin doors from almost every machine. They're all labeled. There's the Family Guy coin door from the Family Guy that was down there.
That's from your pinball machine. I gotta say, the graveyard was super cool. I still can't believe they had a narc board in there. Let's head back to the arcade for a bit. I think I might have missed a few things. Dude, there are so many games packed in here. <laughs> First place! I usually focus so much on the classics that I completely overlook the fact that companies are still making arcade games to this day. And there happens to be some really good ones out there. So while I would love to be a creature of habit and play Pac-Man, I'm having a blast checking out these newer titles. He threw a body at me, dude. This man has the attention span of a fish. There's flashy lights, there's arcade games. He's in heaven. Sure, this is really cool, but he is everywhere. But where we should be is outside because sitting outside are two roller coasters and other attractions that we haven't even touched. I filmed with you all day today, Ralph. It's my turn to have a little fun. I don't like this. Stop! I didn't do that, idiot. He said no bumping. He said no bumping. Oh, no. No. Why is it doing that? This place is awesome, and it's, Cole's been great. It's wicked, man. I had such a fun day. But there's something that I haven't told you yet. What are you talking about? We're going to one more place. Where are we going? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. Oh, my gosh. Dude, dude, no. Oh, no. no, no. Stop pansying out, man. Where are we going? We're going to Vegas. <laughs> oh, by the way, we leave in the morning. What? Mason, you got everything? We're seriously doing this? We leave in two hours, dude. You're insane, man. This is going to be sick. Camera, laptop, bags. Do you have all of it? Yeah, I do. But I just can't believe we're going to Las Vegas. It's going to be crazy. It's an amazing city, dude. I can't wait to see your face. It's going to blow your mind. Every corner you turn. Lights everywhere. Every direction I look. Something new to see. A city full of casinos. And we're going broke today. You'll love seeing the lights, though. There's like thousands of them. You got to be talking millions here without question, man. Well, there's like only like 200 pinball machines in there. So you know what I mean. Pinball machines? Ralph. What are you bringing me here for? The Pinball Museum, baby, duh! Just south of the Mandalay Bay on the Las Vegas Strip. It's really cool, there's a bunch of pinball machines. Supposedly there's some really unique and just rare pieces on the pinball side and the arcade side, so I'm excited to check it out. All right, so I walk in and immediately this place is overwhelming, but in the best way. There's obviously a ton of really interesting things here at the Pinball Museum, but this kind of caught my eye because it was a Transformers machine that Stern put out in 2015 in this attempt to sort of develop smaller pinball machines for the home market. And we know they've been somewhat successful with that. They got the Star Wars one and now the Jurassic Park one that Jack Danger did. But this was, I think, one of their earlier attempts at a home machine. It's not working, unfortunately, but it's still pretty cool to see. Vegas is a tourist destination, and it's cool to see so many people here at the Pinball Hall of Fame. It's proof of pinball's influence in our culture. There's literally hundreds of games here spanning several decades, so whatever you're nostalgic for, there's a good chance you'll find it. So you'd probably expect me to show you all the sexy shots and all these amazing machines, but like kind of hidden in the corner are broken machines that are incoming, and they have labels on them of what's wrong with them. Like this one says it needs a cap kit, it has no keys and stuff like that. So it's kind of interesting because it doesn't look like they have any warehouse space to sort of hide this stuff. So as stuff comes in that might be broken or needs to be fixed, they kind of just hidden in the corner, but it's kind of hidden in plain sight. It's sort of weird. But we aren't in Vegas alone. My buddy Rexer from the Rexer Show is showing us around. Luckily, he's on my side and it's all about pinball today. But we're getting hungry. So we're gonna come back in a little bit, but we gotta go eat. In and out treated us well. I think I heard Rexer mention something about a CRT though. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> I've been looking for a medium resolution CRT for my NARC, so this is an awesome surprise. Rex, are you planning this? I told him, I said, hey, I got a buddy looking for a 19 inch medium res. And uh, that's why I said this is the place, Sharp Image Repair, man. These that's awesome. CRT work, it's fantastic. This is, this is really impressive. So you guys primarily just service CRTs, right? Yeah, yeah, so me and my dad, what we do here is we repair all makes and models of modern chassis boards for CRTs, 19 inch, 25 inch, 27 inch, 33 inch. All of them, you know, we repair them, we can rebuild them. We're the guys, you know. Is it just arcade games? Mainly for arcade games, yeah. You know, home collectors yeah. or arcades. Anybody who's got an arcade, yeah. they need to repair. We repair for all over the U.S. Ship your chassis here. A lot of the work that we get is already recapped. A lot of the work that we get is from other techs that just 
you know, wave the white flag and they said, send yeah. it to Henry, you know, have him take care of it because they can't do nothing. How long has he been doing this? So he's been doing it, I'd say, well over 30 years. He used to be the head tech over at Sharp Image Gaming in California where they made the Sharp Image chassis. You know, once they terminated it, he moved over here to Vegas where he started his repair center and we've been here. He's a mastermind behind all this. He built that. He put the frame on it, nice. put the tube on it, he put the yoke on it, the chassis, everything, adjusted it, everything, the whole nine yards, yeah. you know, the, the convergence rings and everything, you know, there's a lot of people can't do that stuff. It looks like yeah, it came out of a box. That's what we do here. When the chassis come in, we do the full overall on them. You know, we don't just repair the palm as we do the whole board and then we wash it. We test it and then pretty much send it back looking brand new. You know, a lot of people are there like, is this my chest? Is this yeah. the one I sent in? <laughs> you know, we're like, <laughs> spiders on it. Yeah, we're like, that's the one you sent in, man. That's you awesome. know, we just made it look new again, you know, so that's what we live, yeah. like well, to do. And my dad takes pride in that, you know. So. Awesome. Thanks for the CRT, Elvis. This thing looks insane and I can't wait to bring my narc back to life. But now it's time for more pinball. Let's head back to the Hall of Fame. There was more I wanted to see. So in that same area where there's like some broken games, there's this thing called the Drinker Tinker. And you have to see how far you can get it and it will tell you how drunk you are based on <laughs> how far you get. It's kind of goofy. I've never seen this before, but there's like little things like this kind of scattered throughout the pinball museum. Dude, I got mom is playing lonely. <laughs> Okay, so it almost seems like you're not supposed to be in this section or anything, so just check this out really quick. They got a computer space under here, so I don't know, like, there's a lot of, there's so much cool stuff just in this row, but it's all, like, pretty much broken. Like, look right next to this. There's the Star Trek one, like, with the actual, like, captain's chair. Like, this is crazy, but, it's, but a lot of it's broken, so I'm assuming they're going to fix them and get them into operation, but there's like, a lot of interesting stuff in this little broken area. This is one of those, um, versus systems where Nintendo has two games on each side, it's kind of shaped like a V. And this one has Hogan's Alley and Duck Hunt, but this is cool. Like there's a lot of, I don't know. I know I'm probably tripping out. We should probably focus on the pinball. I'm sorry, I'm an arcade guy. What do you, what do you want from me? All right, I know we focused a lot on the aisle with the broken arcades, but isn't it cool though? Anyway, yesterday at Castles and Coasters, I saw a Revenge from Mars, but I forgot to play it. Lucky for Rexer and I, we found one here and we battled it out. On the way out, I played the grip strength test and apparently I'm labeled as a banana crusher, whatever that is. All right, we're just about done here and we're ready to take off. And I just saw one of these Disneyland toy factory machines. And I remember these as a kid. It would heat up molded plastic and you'd end up with one of the characters up there. It'd just be like a little toy. Now the one I remember probably isn't as old as this one because it's from 1961, but they had something totally like this. And I just remember the smell of the plastic, super nostalgic. I wish they still had these things. These are kind of cool. There's a ton of pinball machines in this building, but we're never going to have time to check them all out. Regardless, it was a super fun time and I can't wait to come back. So we're off to check into our hotel, the Circa on Fremont Street, also known as the historic heart of Las Vegas. This area is famous for its vibrant LED canopy that covers the street just outside of the casino doors. As we check in, I can't help but notice this awesome piece of Vegas history in the hotel lobby. Meet Vegas Vicky, a sign of old Vegas that's been restored and now sits as a throwback to the history of downtown Las Vegas. The Circa Hotel is the first new casino built from the ground up in downtown Las Vegas in over four decades. And man, did they do a great job. The hotel room is awesome and it overlooks this amazing pool called Stadium Swim. Actually, there's six pools and a massive 143 foot high definition screen. Imagine playing video games on this thing. So I promised Mason we would check out the strip, but before we go, there's a claw machine in the hotel that caught my attention. Oh, and the guy juggling bottles behind the bar. The claw machine is no ordinary claw machine though. You don't win toys or stuffed animals, you win money. Well, in my case, you lose money, $40 to be exact. Better luck next time. I gotta say, no matter how many times I see the Vegas strip, it's still mesmerizing to me. This is Mason's first time experiencing it, and it's really cool to see his reaction. It's quite overwhelming. There's something new to see wherever you look, not to mention the people watching. There's street performers, musicians, showgirls, show guys. I mean, there's really something for everyone. As we're walking around taking everything in, it's bringing back memories of the first time I came to Vegas. While some of those things are no longer here, a lot of it still remains. Vegas is this fine balance of old and new, and I think they do a great job capturing that. It appeals to the new generation, but it hasn't forgotten about what made it so appealing to past generations. Will there be a time where I return again in the future and everything changes? 
Maybe. But as time moves forward, so does the line of nostalgia. The fact that we experienced it in the first place means we've enjoyed the life we've lived. This is Chasing Nostalgia.